Hey guys, do you want to know if this Makita robot vacuum is worth the price tag? Do you want to know how you're going to justify it to your wife or your significant other? If you want to find out, stay tuned and watch the video. You're going to fit right in. Oh, hey, didn't see you guys there. How's it going? Brad with Frat Designs here today, guys, and I am super excited. I finally bit the bullet and bought the Makita robot vacuum. I've been eyeing one of these, the older version, the DRC 200 for probably about two years now. Um, been picking away at my wife, saying how nice of me to have her on the shop, and she finally said, stop mentioning the vacuum, just buy it. I'm, I'm, I'm over it. So that's what I did, and here we are, and I got the new model here. I actually bought the battery separate. I saved probably about 600 bucks in doing so. I'm not sure why they're priced like that. It might change when you go to look at one. Um, we are in a wood shop here, so this thing's going to be really put to the test. Uh, I do a lot of hand routering, jointing, uh, we have CNC, and although it has a dust boot, it spits out a lot of dust, uh, like, um, like chips and stuff off the side here. I'll take photos and show you guys what it's contending with, and then I'll videotape it while it's going. Um, so, if you're wondering if this is going to work in your wood shop, uh, we're going to cover that. We also have a showroom out front, and it has like the, uh, the low, low carpet on there, like the rough stuff. Um, so if you have a showroom, let's say, and you have tables and chairs or other items that might be like, banged into, you don't want them to damage it, we have that all up front, and we're going to test him in there, and then, so if you're wondering if this is going to work for your showroom, we're going to cover that. We also have a warehouse here, so if you're wondering if this is going to work in your warehouse, which I think is where it will actually thrive the most, because warehouses don't get that dirty, well, mine doesn't anyway, so I don't know. Um, we'll cover that as well. So this bad boy, I think he's equipped with mapping. So my plan here is I'm gonna have him map out the whole store today. And then uh, I don't know if he cleans while he maps. I guess I'll tell you. And then uh, once he has everything mapped out, then I think we'll start running him. I didn't go ahead and clean up everything. I mean, in my opinion, um, this vacuum here is supposed to complement my workflow. I don't wanna have to change a lot of things. So I don't want to have to go around every time before I run the vacuum and clean up everything off the floor. I think he should just be able to go and, and do it. And that, that's my plan. If I run into issues, and I'll let you guys know what those issues are, I might have to start cleaning some things off the floor. But that being said, I got the two 5 amp hour batteries with this thing here. Um, this is my first Makita tool I've ever owned. The rabbit charger here will charge them in, um, in under 45 minutes, which is pretty impressive. So realistically, you could run this thing almost all day, every day. Uh, we got the usage guide here. Uh, it has a lot of stuff that you're supposed to clean up, but it looks like more for like, let's say like a showroom residential, like it says take any vases off the tables that might be bumped or any tassels on carpets, make sure you tuck them underneath the carpet, um, stuff like that. Any object where you might be able to get stuck under, you should remove that. I might have to check that out for my CNC because it looks like it's about 8 inches um, and it says about 77 eighths of an inch is the kind of cutoff for this thing. Um, we've got the remote here, uh, obviously, to use it. It also does come with, a, uh, with an app, so I think I'm going to go at him through the app to start out with. I think that's where you'll be able to see the map and everything and then we'll see how it goes. I'll take photos of him running, I'll take photos of before and after of the floor. Uh, in the, the wood shop, the showroom, and the warehouse, and I'll let you guys know how he does, and then you guys can make the decision if he might actually save you a lot of time in vacuuming and uh, cleaning, and uh, it might be a good purchase for you. Um, I'm just getting ready to run uh, the vacuum for the first time here. I took some before photos. I'm going to do a walk around as well. Uh, we'll put the photos together so you can see what's going on there. Um, the vacuum does not come with the sweepers on it, so if you get one of these, make sure you do that. Um, Pretty cool system actually, it just has this uh, little piece here, it flicks back and forth to lock it on and off, and then there's a little knob here, so all you do is you just push it on here, it'll sit down like that, you'll hear it sit, and then you just give it a click, and then it just sits in there really, really nice. It's, um, it's pretty nifty, uh, the way that Makita's made this work, and uh, we'll see how it does. Hey guys, we're just doing the walk around here. I'm going to show you the shop. You can see all the dust on the floor here. Um, so I'm hoping they'll pick all that up. This is where my dust collector is. So obviously there's just a ton of dust that gets in there around there. Um, so hopefully that all works okay. And you can pick it all up. 
Um, I didn't clean anything off the floor. As you see, I'm a little strapped for space. Um, so he's just gonna have to go around all of it. Um, and I'm, I think he should be able to, no problem. Um, yeah, so as you can obviously tell, my robot is a he, because I keep referring to him as such. So this is my CNC machine, uh, five by 10 can cam. I'm really excited, I just got that as well. Um, but you can see, even with the dust boot, it spits out a ton of dust just around the edges here. So I'm hoping he'll pick that up and keep on top of it. Um, and then even around my saw stop here. But if you look, you can see he's even gonna be able to get under here in these areas that I, even when I do vacuum, I usually probably ignore, uh, which will be really good. Um, there's some bark and stuff over here in our lumber area um, that we retail. And then, uh, yeah, just the rest of the shop. So we'll see how he does. And I'm about to turn him on and give him his maiden voyage. Okay guys, um, the Makita robot vacuum actually, um, the app was pretty brutal. I actually couldn't even get it to work on mine. Um, I'll revisit that before I post a video um, and tell, let you know at the end if I was able to get it figured out. But we're gonna start without it. So the, the remote's pretty cool. You can actually control the vacuum here. So if I press forward, the vacuum will go forward. So the reason I brought us over here was, you see that big pile of sawdust right here? So I'm gonna see how he does at picking it up. So if you just hit the forward arrow on the thing, you start driving. And then you can see he slows down and he's just going right through that big pile of dust. And you can see he left some of it, some of it there, but you can see that he did get the majority of it. Um, so he's in free cleaning mode right now. Um, I'm about to turn him on and I am gonna let him have at the whole shop. Um, and we're gonna see how he does here, but I'm pretty excited. So yeah, stay tuned. Okay guys, I just uh, ran a vacuum here for the, probably ran for about an hour. Um, he was over in this half of the shop um, and he started blinking at me and what he was blinking at was the, the filters full. So I'm just gonna go ahead and dump out what he gathered here onto the, um, onto the table here. We'll see what he got. Um, I think the blinking was actually for the filter. Not surprising, this is a decent sized wood shop. And uh, like I said, I hadn't cleaned this for probably about a whole week. Um, so as you can see that, that's pretty caked on there. So I'm just gonna go ahead and bang that out in the garbage. Um, as far as stuff, this is the fine, the, the fine filter, like filtered uh, garbage. So it's just literally just fine sawdust. I'm not gonna dump this stuff out on my bench. There's no point. It's just dust, some hair. Um, so I'll just go ahead and dump that out right now. Get rid of that. I'll do a better one off video. Um, in the big compartment though, oh, oh, this is right out actually, so how convenient. Get that bang off there. In the big compartment, we're not actually full yet. Like I said, the, f the, the filter filled up on us. But you can see we got some pretty big chunks here. I'm not sure if you guys can see that. Um, but there are, it's actually pretty impressive. I mean, that's gotta be almost an inch long, that piece of wood there. Um, Oh my God, look at this. Look at that, pick that up. That's pretty impressive guys, that's a piece of bark. Um, it's not overly heavy or any, anything like that. But the fact that he cleaned that up is, is really nice. So any bark, like bits that I miss when I'm debarking, stuff like that, I can kind of count on him to come around and clean it up. So I'm just gonna go ahead and quickly bang the, all this stuff off, put it back in and see if that's clean enough uh, and for him to keep going. And then I'm gonna put him down and let him finish. Okay, so it's easily banged off. Filter is not clean, but it's definitely able to filter more dust, uh, uh, air rather. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and put this back in here. The filter does only go one way. There's little tabs here. Um, so it just pops right back in there. We're gonna go ahead and close that up. Latch it. It's gonna go back into our vacuum. And just like that, we're ready to roll again. Um, pretty simple. Uh, I'm gonna let him finish the rest of the shop and then we'll get back to it. Okay, so we have finished the initial run of the, the Makita robot vacuum here. Uh, so I ran him from full charge to dead. I allowed him to go around the whole store. Did a very good job, I had empty him three times in that span. I think that would have been less if I didn't let the shop get so dirty before I tested him. Um, did a very good job cleaning up the dust and stuff like that and like the, the like, uh, 
the fine, like the bigger chunks, the pieces of bark. Um, did a very good job. I think if you allowed him to run like every day or every other day, he would have done a much better job because some of the areas just had so much sawdust built up that he went over them once and then like he didn't pick it all up because he just didn't have enough suction. So I think that he will, I, I'm, I'm gonna charge him up here again and run him again. I'm gonna see how he does the second time around and see if he can pretty much make this place spotless. Um, like I said, I emptied this three times, mainly due to the filter filling up with dust here. Um, so he will pick up a lot of finer dust and stuff like that. Um, but overall, first impressions, very impressed. Picked up some big stuff here. I'll put a close up of these in a photo here. Um, pieces of a little shards of epoxy, a little piece of metal, wood chunk here, and like that big piece of bark I've been holding up. That, that's, a, that's a pretty big, I mean, that's, that's three and a half inches long. Uh, that's pretty impressive that a vacuum picked that up. Um, so first impressions overall pretty good. Uh, I'm gonna be, I wanna see how he'll do here the second time after I charge him up. And then uh, the other thing I wanted to mention was the app. It's absolutely brutal. I could not get this app to work on my phone at all. I have no idea how they even made it work in the, in the, um, the Makita video. It is unusable for my iPhone. That being said, I'm gonna play around with that a little bit more here, but I'm gonna maybe try it again here. So, yeah, I mean, the app is no go. You can do everything from the remote, so I just let him free clean, and he did a very good job. I'm assuming once you map him, and like he maps out each room, he'll do an even better job. Another take on this guy is you need the boundary tape. So I have a few obstacles in here, like I have a, a where, not a, I have a rack in the back of behind the camera here and uh, he would get, actually get stuck back there. And he doesn't really need to go back there because there's it's not dirty back there. I don't go back there except to grab things that I'm storing. So um, perimeter tape would have been awesome, which he is equipped with uh, detecting perimeters. The problem is you can't buy the damn perimeter tape. I looked all over the place. I had to re reach out to a Makita dealer to see if they could order it in for me specially. Um, I looked on Amazon to see if I could find like any perimeter tapes, that magnetic perimeter tapes that would work. Um, I couldn't find any here that I could get in in the uh, like like immediately. Uh, it looked like a couple weeks minimum. So something to keep in mind if you're gonna buy this guy, you're gonna have problem areas, and I would I would have killed for the perimeter tape off the get go. So my CNC, one of the vacuum here, he has this little this little radar at the top here, um, which is great, but my vacuum fits under my CNC and then the t radar hits off the, off the bottom of the CNC. So he just rams into it and keeps going. So unless I, I had to put a couple two by fours there so we would bump and be like, oh, there's something there and then turn around and go away from it, which is inconvenient. The perimeter tape would have been a lot better rather than leaning a bunch of two by fours up against my CNC, which is something that is bugging me. Um, so something to keep in mind there, I think the perimeter tape, if you buy this, you should be buying some and then just initially think about it. I also think I did him, I let him do the whole store in free mode. I think if I was to, well, going forward, what I'm going to do, I'm going to buy the perimeter tape and he will be doing all three rooms separately. I just think the whole transitioning into a new room thing just, just really messes up his cleaning. And I think it'll be a lot more efficient for me to just be like, hey, you're cleaning the wood shop, go. And then the next day, okay, you're cleaning the showroom, go. The next day you're doing the warehouse, go. Uh, so overall impression, very good in the wood shop. Did a very good job in the showroom. Didn't bump anything too hard. He did bump into a few things. Uh, I think his sensors were a little dusty from the wood shop because he cleaned it and it was so dirty. So maybe if you're gonna put him in s from somewhere like this, very dusty to somewhere where he has to be a little more delicate, maybe just give all those cameras and stuff a wipe. Um, this, these guys here, they're all over the sensors just so you can really see him slow down before he rams into something. Warehouse as expected, no problems in there. Big boxes and aisles, he just bumped around and cleaned the whole thing, no problem. Um, so yeah, overall first impression, very good. I'm gonna charge him up and run him again and we'll see what we got. All right guys, so he just finished his uh, second run. <clears throat> I actually stopped him early. He didn't even need to go until he was dead. The, the everywhere was clean. Um, overall, I'm, I'm, this is, I've only had him for about a week now, right? So he just finished his second clean. It's been like a weekend. Um, so done a very good job. The wood shop is clean enough where I can walk up into my showroom. I'm not gonna track sawdust, which is the main reason why I bought this, is I was tracking too much sawdust into my showroom and then I had to vacuum two, twice a day. 
It was, it was ridiculous. So in the wood shop, did a very good job. The second clean, he definitely did better than the first one, obviously, went over everything again. And now that he's caught up, I think he's gonna be able to maintain probably running once or twice a week, or sorry, twi two or three times a week, um, which will be awesome because now I'm not gonna have to worry about it. He did very good in the wood shop all around. Like I said, he picked up some pretty impressive stuff. I mean, some of these are four or five inches long. Um, if you drop a lot of screws, I don't think he's gonna solve that problem for you. He only picked up one screw for me and it's just a little guy. Um, picked up a piece of wire as well, which I am very shocked that he was able to do. Um, so all in all, pretty impressive. Did great in the warehouse as well, uh, as expected. Not much going on in the warehouse, it's pretty straight aisles, cleaning up dust. Um, in the showroom, he did okay for picking things up, um, but not like the, the carpet is like, the sawdust is coarse, so it sticks to the carpet really good. So he had a tough time pulling up some of those. Uh, that being said, he still worked. My main problem with him in the showroom was um, we sell a lot of table legs and stuff like that that are, aren't super sturdy if you were, if they're sitting on their mounting plate. So he would knock these over and then obviously it's not a viable option for me. Um, I can't just have table legs falling over all the time. So not a viable showroom solution for me. That being said, I'm gonna have to vacuum so much less frequently now that he's cleaning the wood shop all the time. So that's not that big of a deal. If you're thinking about getting this for let's say like an office space with carpet or something, um, I honestly think you might want to look at other, maybe more affordable options, um, robots that are more designed for carpet rather than like workshops. And that's just my two cents. Um, again, I want to touch on the perimeter tape. I think that is a must with this thing, unless you have a very, very nice wide open space. Um, I did reach out to a couple of dealers and it does look like one's gonna order order some tape for me. Uh, it looks like it's gonna be a bit of two or three week, two or three week lead time if Nikita has it in stock. Uh, so once I get that, I'm gonna section off some problem areas. And then I think what I'll do is I'll, I'll let him do the wood shop one day and then the warehouse another day. And then we'll just alternate back and forth and then we'll go from there. Um, yeah, so overall, I'm, I'm happy with the purchase. I think it was worth it for me. Um, so I hope you guys found this video a little bit helpful and that it gave you some information if you had cold feet on buying it. Um, I'm overall very happy. So thank you so much for watching and please subscribe. Thanks guys. Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching our first YouTube video. Uh, it's not the first one in the works, but it's likely the first one that we're gonna be able to get out on time. Um, my name is Brad, I own and operate Fractal Designs, and we're going to be doing a lot of cool stuff on this channel, uh, from building tables like this to hopefully some really big 16 to 20 foot boardroom tables. Um, so if you like seeing woodworking content like that, and you're a one man shop like I am for now, uh, then please subscribe and check us out, I'd be happy to have you. If you have any questions about this video, or you have any questions pertaining to the vacuum, uh, just ask me in the comments and I'll do my best to answer all of them. If you want to find out more of what we do here, or what I do rather, and uh, what we sell, stuff like that, feel free to check out our website, fractaldesigns.ca. I'll put a link in the description below. Thank you guys so much, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.